Hey, I'm Russ Jones from Smoky Ribs, and today we are over here in Louisiana. I'm with Wicked Fishing Charters. This is Mr. Andy Jones, our captain. Andy, could you tell everybody where we're at and what we're shooting for, what we're targeting here? Well, Russ, we, uh, we're out changing up a little bit from what we normally do, and uh, we came out here to, to look for some trout and redfish on uh, what's called Grand Island. And uh, there's several different parts of it. Um, they have different names, it goes by different parts, but it's just right outside the Wrigley's and about 12 miles out. So, uh, yeah, we're out here looking for some reds of trout. We were gonna do a little uh, little shoot on our gar trips, but in uh, bull sharks, but the lake's pretty messed up from all the rain. And so we're gonna have to postpone that so trip a little bit. We'll postpone that one, yeah. Right. Well, we already caught, what, three or four? Four, I think. We got four. So uh, we're getting off to a good start. We're gonna go ahead and see what we end up with at the end of this trip. And at the end of this, I'm either going to do a two-part video or I'm going to have one long video, but it's going to be more of a catch it and cook it type video. And I, I hope you all stay tuned to the rest of the video here. And if you're in this area, please look up Wicked Fish and Charters. He can put you on some fish. We appreciate it, Russ, and uh, we're, we're glad to be out here with you. It's a it's an honor and a pleasure, and uh, it's been been super. And looking forward to some some stuff in the future as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. We're definitely enjoying this trip. It's been a while. Yeah, all right, buddy. Good all right, deal. let's catch some fish. They put them in this one? Yeah, just throw them in there. Gotta be. Derek, aka cameraman, normally he's pulling in something here. Let's see what he's got. Oh, yeah. What a quick release. I think he's gonna make the cut. Yeah, let's see. Nope. Hey, Sam. Got hooked up again. That's right. A lot better. I'll go over the side out here. Seen him? Got red? No, I ain't seen him yet. Let me hey, get out of y'all's way. Big old catfish. Oh, catfish. Big old sail cat. Who's got who? I don't know. We got two of them. Yeah, I got it. What 
kind of bait you using there, Andy? Using a uh, matrix shad on a um, on a quarter ounce jig head. They're hitting it on the fall. Yeah. That's a, little, oh, that's a little better fish. There you go. Oh, broke my line. That's a good trout right there. That's gonna make it. He's fat. That one's been eaten. Let me get in your spot for you. <laughs> Folks were loving it. Yeah. You know they they were just thrilled with the with the fight and the action. And a lot of people had never seen an alligator gar, especially one you know four or five feet long. Right. And. Uh, they come out of the water and tail walk like that. Uh, we got such a good positive reaction. We said, well, hey, you know, we got a lot of these fish over here in Lake Pontchartrain. Right. Let's uh, let's advertise it and fish it. Let's do it. And we end up uh, finding out there's a, a real nice bullred population to go along with it. Um, so we usually get. You know, we try to get a, a bull shark or two and a alligator gar and, and a couple of redfish usually top off the trip, you know. A lot of these fish are some of the biggest fish that people have ever caught in their lives. Yeah. And well, I noticed on your, uh, I think it's your truck, it says, what is it, Chasing the Kraken? Chasing the Kraken. What does that mean exactly? Uh, on our website on MandevilleFishingCharters.com, there he is, we got a... Uh, Oh, little lady fish. Little lady fish. Uh, uh, a story. It's called Chasing the Crack. And, and Tyler and I were out. We just put some baits out. We were fishing. And uh, something hit our line and just exploded a live bait. We had a big we had a big offshore rod and reel on the boat that time. And it was just screaming drag. We uh, we took pursuit of it. And it, it was like no fish that we'd ever seen. It had a wake behind it. It was cutting across the water and it looked like it was seven feet long. It was wow. just, it was amazing. And uh, we fought it. You know, I'll tell you what it seemed, it must have been 30, 40 minutes of a fight. It was a long fight. And we were getting close to where we thought we were gonna be able to see the fish. And the water was much like it is today, a little bit stained. and didn't have real good visibility and it was getting close and all of a sudden the line just went just went slack just like that wow and uh, we thought it broke the line yeah we got it up and realized that it had actually broken an eight odd hook the hook had wow. snapped in half oh, and that that became uh the legend of the kraken for us and we've been chasing that fish and we've had several encounters where fish have spooled us and we catch big you know big fish we call them the kraken you know or, or <laughs> customer loses one and yeah you know and it happens and that's that's the kraken for us and 2014 we didn't we didn't really get any big fish like that where we got spooled in 15 right out of the gates three of our customers lost lost line just whoosh, took everything they had so that's the story of the Kraken for us. We're not sure what the fish is. It could be anything in your imagination, you know? Right. Uh, we like the big fish out there, and that's that's kind of what we pursue. Well, he hit it hard, but... That's what that small one's acting like they're 10 pounders today. Yeah. I think he's gonna make it. He might make it. There you go, Kyle. Well, it looks like I inherited the job of cameraman because my son is just having too much fun. <laughs> There's another one. That little mirror lure is working good today. Yeah, it is. That's good for the boys to come out and have a little fun, huh? Yes, sir. He's legal. All yeah, right. he's legal. Yeah. Good. Good to go. Get him in the pot. Get him in the cooker. <laughs> Let old Russ have work his magic with him later. That's right. You got one? You might have to come back here and show me what a 12 inch trout looks like, Tyler. Looks like it. <laughs> huh? Looks like a 12 inch one. Yeah, he's really close. I don't know about that. He swallowed that up, though. Let's see. Uh, nope. Close.
Andy, I thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Russ, we appreciate having you guys, man. What a good time. Excellent. Like I just said, I can't believe that we even caught fish after all the rain Louisiana has seen yeah. in the last week, week and a half. Unreal. It was tough conditions, but uh, it was a lot of fun. And, and you know, you got to go. You're not going to catch them from the couch. And uh, yeah, it's been tough. And you know, we're praying for all the folks uh, in Louisiana. We know. Uh, yeah, absolutely. State, our state's had a tough go of it lately. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but to get out and have an opportunity to fish with you guys and just yeah. you know, it was really fun. We had a great time. Tyler enjoyed it. We got to do it again sometime for sure. Absolutely, Russ. Yeah. We appreciate it, and I, I tell you, look forward to doing that gar that gar trip with you. And, uh, yeah, we got a gar trip coming yeah. up. I think y'all gonna enjoy yeah, that. I know I am. That and uh, get some of your secret recipe and seasoning on some of that. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. There man. you go. Sounds like fun. We're we gonna do it too. Appreciate it, buddy. Right, man. Enjoy. We had a blast yesterday with Captain Andy with Wicked Fishing Charters and his son Tyler. We got home last night about 8.45. We left the docks at 8 o'clock, so it's around a 45 minute drive from there to where I live. First thing I did is I took the speckled trout that we brought home and I gutted them and I put them right back on good ice. It's the following day, the fish are in fine shape, very fresh, getting ready to make a classic New Orleans dish with this. It's called Trout Pontchartrain. It's going to be good. Let's go ahead and get started. I've got all-purpose flour that I just seasoned up with the frog bone all-purpose seasoning. Speaking of frog bone, Keith Jenkins with frog bone is the one that actually hooked me up with Andy and he was supposed to go with us last weekend but I think everybody has heard about all the bad weather and the flooding and everything in South Louisiana so that trip didn't happen and uh, he wasn't able to go this weekend but I want to give Keith a special thanks for hooking me up with Andy. We really had a good time and we're going to do it again. We're going to get that gar hunt going on and uh, hopefully Keith will be there. So I've taken my fillets and I've coated them in the seasoned flour and we're just simply going to pan fry these into their golden brown on each side. This is the first step. All the fish are ready. What I've done is I've taken and I drained out most of the oil other than just a uh, little remnants here. And as you see, this is just the, uh, the fond, I reckon you would call it, the bits from frying it. We're gonna leave that in there. We're gonna add in three Roma tomatoes. About three quarters cup of button mushrooms. All right, we're just gonna let these sweat down for about a minute or so. And one tablespoon of frog bone seasoning. Now I'm going in with about two tablespoons of fresh minced garlic. I'm gonna let that go around a minute, let that garlic release its oils and its flavors. And I've got about two tablespoons of fresh basil, fresh out of my garden. We're going to add in about two splashes of white wine. We're going to hold right there. This is a Pinot Grigio. It goes really well with seafood. And the juice of one half of a lemon. Just let this go for a few minutes and denature the alcohol in that wine. Then we'll go from there. Now I'm going in with some chicken stock. This is around eight tablespoons. Gonna let this come back to a simmer. Now this has got to reduce to really concentrate these flavors. The chicken broth is actually going to give it more depth of flavor than what a seafood stock would. We are back to a simmer. Gonna go in with around three quarter cup of heavy cream. Gonna mix it well, bring it back to a simmer. And we're gonna let this reduce. We're gonna get some body to this and get some thickness to it. We'll be back. All right, now I'm going in with one pound of crawfish tails. These tails are pre-cooked. Now, the traditional classic trout ponchatrain calls for crab meat. And 
nowadays people are putting a lot of twists to it and this is one of them adding crawfish you can also add in shrimp all right we have thickened up nice now i'm going to add in probably around it's about a, between a quarter and a half cup of green onions it's going to stir these in cut the heat off and we're going to plate this up stir some of this up we got three little speckled trout fillets Simply just going to apply this to the top. And I do think I want just a touch more of that. Trout poncha train. Let's take a bite. Two of my favorite things in the world. Speckled trout, crawfish. How can you go wrong? Outstanding dish. I hope you give this a try. This can be done with numerous fish. I use speckled trout, you can use redfish, you can use mahi-mahi, you can use grouper. Any really firm flesh white fish would work really good on this. Like I said, the uh, original traditional train sauce calls for crab meat. I use crawfish. You can do either or, or you can do both. You can use shrimp. You can mix it up however you like. Nothing's written in stone. I want to thank again Andy over there at Wicked Fishing Charters for a fun weekend and uh, hooking us up with these speckled trout. Can't wait to hook up again on another fishing trip. Until next time, smoke your ribs.